Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Today we'll be changing this rear axle suspension A-frame ball joint. Okay, so the ball joint is RF500110 or ANR1799. The product supplied by Bearmark is made by Lemforder, which are actually a very good company for ball joints. <laughs> Okay, generally in the manual it will say support the chassis body and let the axle hang. Okay, no problem. When we're taking off the A-frame, yes we can let the axle hang as you can see here. What's holding it up from dropping completely is the shock absorbers. It does however put strain on the bushes. Okay, so the A-frame ball joint is bolted to the axle and it is also bolted to the upper link arms which you can see here by two bolts we need to take this off to be able to get to the ball joint right so there you see four bolts and you'll use a 13 mil spanner which is by hexagonal like so and you might need a little bit of assistance because they are quite hard in there you'll also notice the pink which is a thread lock okay so what we're after is taking this part of the assembly off the vehicle not rocket science to remove, however just remember that your axle does need to be supported and lifted once you fit it back together again. It is actually held on by two bolts here which are 19mm heads, you can see them just blurred in the background. And okay, we cannot take that castellated nut off as it stands. Right, so once we have this assembly on the bench we can then undo these two M8 bolts which have got 10mm heads on them. And after that we need to remove the axle bracket and that will be taking the castellated knot off. You'll notice that it has a split pin there. Don't worry about taking that off, just use a bit of force and it will rip it out. Okay, With a breaker bar first of all, like so. Make sure it's securely fitted in the vise before you do such a thing. And then you can lubricate it and wind it off. Okay, It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now. If you find it's rusted in, then use a breaker bar until you feel the resistance has gone, and then use a ratchet with the socket on it. I found that this is like 28, 29 millimeters, which obviously means that it's an AF size. We're using these all drive sockets, so we don't have an issue here with the sizes or actually gripping. So there we go, we'll wind it off. Once that's out, then we can give the bracket a whack with a hammer once, and that will split the taper, and the ball joint will fall out, like so. So far, so good. However, to push in, or even push out a ball joint, you need a workshop press. You can either borrow one, from a friend who's got one or get one like what we've got here which is an economy style basically it's a bottle jack on a frame and this gives about 10 tons of pressure or thereabouts which is adequate enough to do the job all right to be able to use the press you need to cut a little bit of the frame away like so with a hacksaw so you can put it into a press and push it out what we'd advise here is not to use too much heat on a component like this as fear of changing the structure and giving it a weakness. Right, so basically what you're doing is using a hacksaw or even a, a thin angle grinder blade and just cut the lugs so you can get these like so and fit them in to the plates of the press like so, okay? And once that's like that, then it is evenly pressed out. It does need to be pressed out directly in the center like so. And this jack, to be honest with you, didn't work too hard to push this out. And here we go, the components have been split apart. Quite easy. If it's the first time you would ever use a press, then I'll just warn you that initially when you put the pressure on, it will build up until it releases like so. Be warned of that because there is a fair amount of energy being released. Okay, so the bracket here, you'll be wanting to clean up the insides as much as possible. Don't grind it, use something like a flap wheel 
remove all the rust and corrosion any grot that's in there this will help you assemble it a lot easier corrosion will always try to hinder you so once that's done and the face is nice and clean we can then just wipe a bit of WD on it to get the dust out of it and this is our new ball joint okay right personally I like to use a little bit of anti fretting paste which stop things corroding together you could use a simple engine oil this just helps the next person that comes along to be able to strip this without the corrosion seizing it into place right so using a longer bolt we can line up the bolt holes now, this is quite vital to be honest with you because this needs to be secured once it's pushed into place we have a nice little tool that we've bought from eBay here a guy called Sean It's nicely made a very heavy duty and it saves going out and buying a huge socket this fits over nicely it's purposely built for the job and it will help push this ball joint back into place like so nice and tidy otherwise use a tube and a plate on the top something that is not going to damage the gator boot right so once that's done it's just a matter of securing it with the m8 bolts which are indeed uh, 25 newton meters torque once they've been done up or nipped up as they were it's a matter of putting the axle bracket back on and putting the ball joint taper into place okay so you fit the washer and your castellated nut then wind it down it shouldn't be an effort to do up first of all and then what we're looking at is tightening the nut up now there doesn't seem to be any data in the workshop manual that i can find that's specific to this castellated nut so what we'll do is we'll wind it up a little bit more with the ratchet and then we'll be using a breaker bar to uh, do it up just be warned here that sometimes when you add pressure to something it can slip out of the vise so be careful of that right so we're going to pull it up and try and line up the holes for the split pin split pin through and yeah I'm too lazy to actually go and get a set of um, pliers so we're going to use a socket here just to bend up the split pin in America I think you guys call this a cotter pin but in the United Kingdom this is called a split pin it's a split pin because it's split like so right so that's secured once it's bent over now what we have is an articulating a-frame ball joint on the axle bracket that's good and new and in good condition compared to the old one that we had which had a split gator like so this is not going to seize up it's not rocket science to fit it back onto the axle and remember we're using a 13 mil spanner again and put some thread lock on the bolts and you'll be needing a bottle jack to help you lift the axle to position it to fit the bracket into place right well we're not going to show you how to do this because we need to get the upper link arm and the brackets off because you see the bushes here are absolutely wrecked when the vehicle's sitting on the ground it's hard to tell if there's any excessive play in it however these bushes are absolutely spanked they're knackered so they need to be removed and replaced so we're putting some poly bushes into these 